A lot of people don't know this, or they don't believe me when I say this. I got in the first national company of Evita with Patti LuPone. Yes. Rehearsing in Los Angeles, and I was in, I never opened in the show. I was in rehearsals for about three weeks, and Charlie's Angels, somebody heard about me, and they needed a guest star for an episode called Dancing Angels, and they needed me for four days, and and I had to make a choice. Uh, they said, you can either stay with Ibita and make $750 a week as a chorus boy, or you can take four days on a television show. And I said, you know what? I'm here. I've got my dream. So I quit that show. You know, Hal Prince wow. didn't know me or you know, anything. But, but anyway, I quit it. I did that four days on Charlie's Angels. And from then on, I started doing guest stars, Three's Company, Too Close for Comfort, you know, Malibu awesome. TV movie, and uh, on and on and on. So that was really a turning point. Huge turning point. And it was a big decision because of course. it could have just as well gone that I did four days and never worked again. Sure. So there was a couple of sleepless nights there. While of course. I, well, and all I'm, my friends told me I was blacklisted from the theater and all that stuff. Yeah. Tell us about the, uh, just your first, how'd you hear about your audition at General Hospital and how'd that, how'd that go down? Another, uh, okay. There was a show called the American Movie Awards hosted by Roger Moore and produced uh, David, uh, I can't remember, it doesn't matter. Andy Gibb was a special guest star singing a nominated song. Okay. And he was having some personal problems and hadn't shown up to rehearsal that day to shoot the show. My agent at William Morris called me at home and said, Brad, do you think you can learn a song and, and be on a television show tonight? Wow. And I said, sure. It was the, the once in your life you'll find her. At oh, yeah. Christopher. Uh, Cross, Mary. yeah. Christopher Cross. Yes. And I said, like you do as an actor, you say, yes, I can do that. I can memorize that. So they took me over to the Palace Theater, uh, a director, I don't remember their name, but they said, here's the deal. You start out and back, you walk down the aisle, you sing part of your song to these two seats. Then you walk down to the front, you sing to these two people and you come up on stage and finish your song. Easy peasy. Because the track was already recorded, not the voice, but the music. And I fit in that range. So I said, great. They put me in an usher's tux because I didn't have a tux. And then that evening, it was a lot, you know, live big theater audience full of people. And uh, the stage manager standing next to me. And she said, what are you going to do if you mess up? <laughs> oh, I'm, gosh, come on. You know, like, come on, person. Like only they do sometimes. And I said, we'll stop tape and I'll shoot it again. And she goes, honey, this is live. You're on. And push me out there. So I started singing. And it was an out-of-body experience because I was, like, scared. Completely. Of course. But I walked down that aisle, and then I turned to sing, and here's Lynn Redgrave and her sister. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I went down to the front row. And to this day, I can't remember who was sitting on the front row. But it was somebody more famous than Lynn Redgrave. I'll tell you that. Wow. So, I, and then I walked up on stage, I finished the song, and Roger Moore came out, and he's like, my God, we've got a star. <gasps> An understudy's come on stage, and he's a star. And, you know, I was dressed at that moment like Cinderella in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somehow. And they put me in a limo. They took me to Chasen's. Yeah. And I mean, big movie stars, Jimmy Stewart and all these people. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's just incredible what you did, you know, and all that. And I was just like, thank you. Thank you very much. And then the limo, I lived on Doheny at this time and close to the supermarket that's there on Doheny and Beverly. Yeah. It, he, it, was that Hughes Market? Yeah. Yeah. The, the limo and Chasen's right across the street. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The limo did a U-turn and dropped me off at my little apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And left, and the next morning I'm like, what, is that real? That oh my God. And that was like a 24-hour experience, right? In the it, morning you found out you were doing it, and then, then, then it was over. And it was over. And, and Gloria Monte had watched the show that night. Wow. 
And all of a sudden, they were calling all over the place going, get this kid in here. That's so awesome, Brad. 